Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to Mom Spills the Tea. So today I want to talk a little bit about um, something that the Lord has been laying on my heart the past couple of days. Um, first of all, I just want to pray. So if you, I could, if, if you guys would just pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father God, we just thank you God for everything that you've done for us in this in, in our day and in our lives, Lord, we give you glory and we praise, Lord. I thank you, Jesus, that you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for our sins so that we may live with you etern and have eternal life, Lord. Lord, just touch my mouth, Lord Jesus. Just uh, let me be a beacon for you, Lord, and, and Holy Spirit, just work whatever you want me to say. Just help help me say it in your name lord uh, we in the name of jesus we bind every evil forces everything that is not of god uh, we rebuke you in the name of jesus satan we rebuke you in the name of jesus thank you god thank you okay so um just want to let you guys know that i am a christian and i do believe that jesus christ came to earth as a human and died on the cross for our sins and he rose on the third day and he is sitting at the right hand of God the Father in heaven preparing a place for us scripture and the Bible talks about that okay so I want to read I want to okay guys uh, sorry about that my dog was barking he's seen someone outside but Guys, I want to talk to you guys a little bit about what what's going on. If you don't know, there is so much chaos going on in our world today. And it's not just in your states. It's all over the world. Never ever in our human history has the whole world shut down like it is. And it is it is the pure evil going on in our world. There is so many satanic forces that is running rapid right now. That's why I don't know if you guys have had problems um, with fighting things in your mind a lot lately, but I have, and it has just been nonstop. The devil has has come against me in my mind saying, well, you're not going to go to heaven. You know, you've done too many things wrong. Remember when you did that in your past? No, no, you have to accept Jesus in your heart. If you truthfully believe that Jesus died on the cross for your sins and arose on the third day and he sits in heavenly places at the right hand of God the Bible says that you have to truthfully believe that Jesus Christ died for your sins but getting back to this evil forces that are coming against the Christians you know in me the coming against my mind I'm probably everybody is battling something in their mind but you know, I have to rebuke Satan and his evil forces daily. I have to put on the full armor of God daily to protect myself from these evil, evil spirits, evil forces that comes against me daily. Before I get out of bed every day, I put on the whole armor of God. The whole armor of God is the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth, the shoes of peace, and I take up my sword of the spirit and my shield of faith to fight off in battle. I also ask God every day to enlighten my heart so that I may know his calling that he has on my life. We also need to bring every thought into captivity unto into obedience of God. So um, 
I'm going to bring a, I'm going to uh, share a couple of scriptures. So I'm looking on my Bible app here. So the two scriptures I want to share first is uh, found in Matthew chapter 24, verse 36. And it says, but of that day and hour knoweth no man. No, not the angels of heaven, but my father only. And ver cha Matthew chapter 24, verse 44. Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. Now in the Bible it says, from God, no man knoweth the day or the hour. And that's true. But what he does tell us to look for in the scripture is look for signs of his coming. In, in, when it's his time to come, he, he reveals in the scripture all the signs before we shall know approximately about time that he's coming back. And guys, in our world today, there is so much chaos that's going on around us that it is, it is going so rapid, the evil forces that are going on. That we can't keep up with it daily. It is going so fast. Every day you wake up, there's something new. Something new that has come about that's evil. You know, and and we just can't keep up with it. And, you know, the Lord put it on my spirit the other day when I was praying. He's coming just that quickly. That much more quickly, He's coming. He is coming. And you need to get yourself right with God. You have to believe on Him. All you have to do is call upon His name. So what the God, and I'm not the type of person that, that is going to talk about dreams that I've had. God has impressed on my heart to talk about two dreams that I've had and also a dream that my son had. I'm going to say God has brought back to my attention the last few days, a dream I had when I was 18 years old. In this dream, when I was 18 years old, I lived in this apartment. I was married. I lived in this apartment. And I, it, I was sitting in my apartment, but I was also standing outside my apartment as well. So it was like I was in two different places at the same time in my, in my dream. And I remember looking over while I was standing outside. I looked over at this door. The door was covered. The door was a red door. I don't know what color handle it was, but I just know it was a red door. And by this red door in front of this red door, I seen this man, all in a white rope, standing there, he knocked on the door. When he knocked on the door, myself sitting inside the apartment heard the knock on the door. But while me standing outside the apartment, looking at this man, knocking on the door, he had his hand on that doorknob, getting ready to open that door. And I believe that that was Jesus Christ standing there saying that this was, this was 30 years ago for a dream that I had. So you can probably put together my age. But he, I believe that he was saying that he was right at that door at that time. So there was a red door. I heard him knock in my, when I was in my apartment. Me standing outside the apartment, seeing this man standing there outside of this red door and had his hand on that doorknob getting ready to turn it. And the most pure white that I've ever seen anybody have. I mean, we see the color white, like the color of a piece of paper, white. But this robe that this man had on was pure, the purest of white that I've ever seen in my life. 
And I never thought about that dream until these past few days. God just brought that back to me. Two to three weeks ago, my son wakes, he woke up. He told me that he woke up and he had a dream. And in his dream, we were sitting down eating or doing something around the kitchen table. And he said that I looked at him in this dream and told him, Jesus is coming. Jesus is here. It is the rapture. It's time now. That's all he said that was in his dream. Now he's 14 years old. The same week. Yeah, I can't remember if it was a couple days before or a couple days after. I had, and I'm going to show you this picture. Um, hold on just a minute. I'm going to get it. All right, guys, I had to get that picture, but uh, I had my daughter to draw me a picture of the dream that I had, and I'll show you that picture when I'm done. Um, so in this dream that I had, I was standing outside or somewhere. I, I really don't know where I was at. Didn't really see anyone outside around me. There was no one. I seen this dream. I didn't hear any noise. Didn't didn't hear. The only thing I seen was I seen the clouds. The clouds in the sky. It was a it was a blue sunny day, and there were clouds in the sky. A lot of clouds. But in this dream, I looked up at the sky. I began to see these clouds roll back, and these clouds made like stairs like the sides of a stair they made stairs like stepping stairs going up well in between these two banisters of clouds that was shaped like stairs was a path didn't really know much about the path i just kind of seen the path but it wasn't really that didn't stick out to me what stuck out to me was these clouds being rolled back and opened up and forming clouds on each side like a stairs like you can climb those but they were on each sides of this path well at the top of these stairs or this path i seen the most pure bright light this light was so pure and so bright that it was at the top of those stairs, at the top of that path between, or, you know, up at the top of the stairs, like you're looking up at stairs, and it was a round light. Around this round light was clouds all around it, white clouds. And that's all I've seen. That dream... I believe the Lord was telling me, showing me that he is right there. He is right there at the top of those stairs and getting ready to open up the clouds to come back to get his bride home, take his bride home. Guys, if there's ever been a time that you need to be prepared is now. You don't have tomorrow. Tomorrow is not promised to us. I'm going to show you this picture that my daughter drew for me. Let me find it. And I don't know if you'll be able to see it because of the light or not. Oh. But I explained to her this dream. And yeah, I'm sorry, guys, it's coming. Oh, there it is. Okay, I'm going to turn off this other light, so hopefully you can see. But I hope you can see. At the top, that's not a glare. That's what she drew. And that's almost exactly like my dream was, was that. Guys, I don't know about you all, but if that is not a rapture dream, 
I don't know what is. And in the dream, neither my son or myself or the one I had 30 years ago. There was not a lot of chaos going on. It was a calm, calm, still, still dream. Just a calmness dream. If you do not believe in Jesus Christ, I encourage you to get your life right with God. I tell you, you have to believe that there are a few things you have to do. You have to believe that Jesus came and died on the cross and rose again on the third day. And he's sitting at the right hand of God the Father right now as we speak. I encourage you to seek out the word of God. If you are not a believer and you don't know who Jesus Christ is, I am speaking to those people. I'm speaking to the people that laugh about this rapture thing that's going to happen. I'm speaking to the, the people that doesn't know God, that doesn't believe any of this. I'm, I'm speaking to people that, that don't, that don't seek their Bible. Don't look in there. I'm seeking at the people who laugh at us that say these things. And maybe you are a lukewarm Christian. I'm speaking to you. There is a heaven and there is a real hell. And you have two choices in this life that you have to make. They are the most important decisions that you've ever had to make in your life. More so important than when you had a child born. But it is you. You have two choices in life. You can either choose the path of righteousness and strive to be right with God where you enter in heaven and live with God for eternity. Or there's the second choice that I, ho I, I hope no one ever does. And that choice is hell. Hell is a real place. You know, you may take your, your worst day that you've ever had in your life. Maybe your parents died. Maybe your child has died. Or whatever it may be. You, you can't put, you cannot grasp, in our minds, we cannot grasp how horrible it's going to be in a place called hell. You see, heaven is a real, real place. It is the most blessed place. And we, it, it tells us in our Bible what heaven is all about. But us, we can't wrap our head and we can't comprehend what it's really going to be. It is going to be the most pure, the most righteous place where we, we get to go with God. And we get to spend all eternity and worshiping this Lord and Savior that was made sin to save us from our sin. I'm not so sure that myself, and I'm not so sure that anybody else could lay their life down and be crucified like that. While you got beat, while people spit at you and mocked you and laughed at you. No one on this planet could, could put their self in that, in those shoes. You got people worshiping things that they should not be worshiping. You know, I, up until a couple of months ago, when all this first, this stuff started happening. Yes, I was a Christian. I believed in God, but 
I didn't live my life like you should live your life. I wasn't prayed. I mean, I prayed every day, but I wasn't prayed up every day. I wasn't reading my word every day. The like watching a TV show. Then I enjoyed watching TV. I enjoyed listening to secular music. I'm not saying that listening to secular music is wrong or watching TV is wrong. But for me, God convicted me of those things. I don't even have a desire to watch things on TV. Or I don't even have a desire to listen to that kind of music anymore. Because I want to fill my spirit and my soul with godly things. You know, we cannot judge people for their sin. We cannot be the one to say, oh, you did that wrong. You're going to hell. Oh, you told a lie. You're going to hell. No. we That is wrong. You are sinning yourself if you say that someone sinned and, and they can't get right with God. You can't do that. You know, being a Christian is trying to strive your best to live for God the best way that you possibly know how. That means praying every day, seeking God's word every day, and showing kind, love, mercy, grace, um, the fruit of the spirits to other people in our life that we come in contact with. Being a Christian is not judging somebody for what they've done. If, if you are a new believer in Christ, you don't need to listen to other people tell you what's wrong in your life and what, what you should be doing or should not be doing. No, that's wrong. What you should be doing when you are a new believer in Christ, and even if you're a Christian, God has to be the one to convict you. Well, if I read, I'll take for instance, if I read a, hor a, a scary book or I watch a scary movie, I don't do those things. But if I did, I'm using that as an example. I can't tell you that that is wrong. My walk with God is not like your walk with God or anyone else's. Every single person on this planet is at a different place in their life with Christ. You cannot judge someone if they have, if you are, if you are a Christian, you cannot say, you can't watch that. You can't listen to that. You can't, no, because maybe they are not in the same place as you are. In your walk with God, in your walk with Christ, God has to begin to deal with those individuals and convict them the way he wants to convict them. Personally, if I was a sinner now and I came to, the, to Christ and someone told me, well, the Bible says this and the Bible says that. You can't do this and you can't do that or you're going to hell. And they're condemning me for every wrong thing that I'm doing in my life. Do you think I would want to get saved and, and go to church and live for God? No, I would not. Because you've got somebody sitting there telling you what you did wrong. Every little thing that you say is wrong. Every little thing that you did was wrong. That is not our place to tell someone those things. That is not our place to judge someone. In the Bible, it says, do not be judged lest you be judged. Don't cast the stone unless you have walked a perfect life in the footsteps of Jesus Christ that had no sin. If anyone could cast the stone, it would be him. He's the only man ever that has walked on earth a perfect man. So before you start judging people, you need to take a hard look, look at your life and maybe what you're doing. 
We are not to judge people at all by any means. If there is a person that doesn't know Jesus Christ or they are scoffing about Jesus Christ, you know what you need to do? You need to pray for that individual. You need to pray for them. You need to show them by what you're doing and how you are living your life. You know, you, you say you're a Christian, but yet do you walk that walk? Do you strive every day to be more and more like Christ? Or do you stand there and you say you're a Christian and you judge a person? Or judge someone. You know, the things you say to someone, maybe they are getting ready to get their heart and right life with God. And Lord knows we don't have much time, guys. We are about out of time. But something that, that they see you do, or you may say something, and it might turn them away from God to where they are doomed into hell for all eternity. You see, being a Christian is more than just reading your Bible. That is a big part. It is more than just praying for someone. It is about the fruits that you labor. Meaning the way you walk, the way you talk, the way you act. Are you filled with hate? And are you filled with bitterness? And anger? And are you lashing out at people when they do something wrong to you? Are you forgiving when someone does something wrong to you? Or are you striving every day to be more and more perfect like Christ? No, we are not perfect. We will not be perfect until we get that glorified body when Jesus calls us home. We will not be able to live a perfect life. In our minds, we battle day after day after day. But we have to strive to be more and more like Christ, not being condemning to the, the baby Christian or not being condemning to someone that's getting ready to give their heart and life to God. You either make or you either break the person that you are witnessing to. If they see you like cussing all the time or watching terrible things or and I'm not judging anyone I'm not saying what you're doing is wrong because God has to convict you of those things but if you're convicting someone and someone is not seeing you do those things then you cannot witness to that person they are not going to learn from you if you are a Christian, you always have one person watching every little move you make. Every move. I do not want to be the cause of someone going to hell on my time. I don't want that. You know, the things that are going on around us. You know, our Bible says that in the last days, there is signs of his soon returning. And every prophecy that's ever been said in the Bible, it is there. Guys, we are on the cusp of his returning. I mean, he's not just at that door. He has got his hand on that doorknob and it is turned and he is getting ready to open up that door.
So I'm going to ask each of you that's listening to my voice. If you don't agree with anything I said, I want you to know that Jesus loves you. No matter what you've done wrong, no matter what, all you have to do is believe in Jesus and ask him to forgive you of your sins and believe that he is the God that sits on the right hand of God our Father. You just have to believe. That's all you have to do. And ask him, have him, ask him to forgive you of your sins and come into your heart and make you pure and white as snow. Guys, our Bible says to be watchful and be ready. And I am watching because he's there. He is here. He is right there, guys. Right there. Where are you going to spend your eternal life? Are you going to spend your eternal life with God for all eternity in heaven? Or are you going to spend eternal life in hell? With Satan and all his demons. Where you will be tormented for all eternity. It's not just some place, some fantasy place that someone thought of. Read your Bible, guys. Read your Bible and stay prayed up. I love each of you guys. If anybody has any questions, please feel free to, to question me. If you don't believe, and I always say this, if you don't believe anything I say, I ask you, read the book of Daniel. Read Matthew. Matthew is when Jesus came down and tells a story of Jesus' life. Read them. And find out for yourself. Look in the book of Revelation. Because Revelation predicts what's to come. And if you are not ready. When he calls us home for the rapture. You are going to go through. Seven horrible, horrible, horrible years. On this, on this earth. And nobody can comprehend that the horror that's going to take place. You see the horrible things that's going on around us. You know, get yourself right with God. Quit putting it off. Quit saying, oh, I'll get ready tomorrow. I'll get ready tomorrow. I'll wait until I do this. I'll get ready. No, you don't have time. You don't know if, if you are, are going to live five minutes from now. Or the next time you walk outside, is it going to be your time then? So guys, I love you all. Thank you guys for watching my video. Um, if you, Like I said, if you have any questions, you can always message me. But guys, the truth is in your Bible. Don't take anything that someone says even if they say they're a Christian and you and you think eh, that's not true or or I have some questions about that look in your Bible look in your Bible and if you don't understand the King James Version there is apps um, I have an app it's Bible U version app and it gives you I mean there's like probably 50 languages or, or 50 might not be quite 50, but 50 um, um, Bibles that they're in. Like you have the New King James Version, the King James Version. Um, so it's, it's in there. 
Uh, you can look at it, and if you don't quite understand what's in the Bible, you can always go to the app and put in what what Bible you want to read from, and it will it will you know look at that. So, um, guys, I love you all, and um, we don't have long, so I encourage you guys to get yourself right with God before it's too late. Thank you guys for watching my channel. Please subscribe. And if you don't, just subscribe to my channel. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Thank you. Talk to you all later. Bye-bye.